Uh, hello, I am Sonori from the Affiliated Institute of R3. Today, I talk about the forensic analysis of RFS journaling. Before everything, let me just briefly explain the two key topics of the presentation. I'm going to explain what is uh, RFS journaling and then present how to analyze the RFS journal files. Also, I'm going to show you the analysis process that was carried out for the development of RFS journaling forensic tools. The motivation of this talk is like this. When our research team analyzed RFS version 3, I found the signature and log. I guess that the signature is something like the record signature of the NTFS log file because RFS is also developed by Microsoft. I expected that the logging concept of NTFS is similar to that of RFS. As you know, analysis for log file and US in general is the most essential for NTFS forensics. Therefore, I thought it would be a great help to forensic investigator if the RFS journaling is analyzed. So we explored RFS journaling and this talk is about the result of the research. Uh, our research is meaningful in that we confirm the existence and the structure of the log file and change journal that can be used as forensic artifacts in RFS volumes. And based on the analysis results, I developed an office tool to analyze the RFS journaling files. We reverse engineered the RFS file system driver and RFS util to understand the internal structure of RFS you can see that the um, RFS file system driver has two files on for RFS version one. In the in the other, in other words, um, there is a big difference between RFS version one and version three, which will be explained in detail later. All the terms we identified while analyzing RFS wrapper to driver files. RFC to symbol files and event messages. The data structure of RFS is well known from previous studies. Therefore, the RFS data structure will be described briefly as necessary to understand journaling. RFS use pages to allocate the data. Every page consists of a header and table. The header contains the signature, address, and object ID for the paging. A table is a structure for storing data on a page. Tables store data using a row structure inside. RFS version 3 and version 1 are so different that driver files are developed separately. The change we will note is the newly added container table and log file information table to the metadata file from RFS version 3. Of course, the rest of the metadata files also changes slightly in the data structure, but their loads are not very different. We will cover the log file information table later and briefly introduce the metadata files necessary to understanding the log file. First, the object ID table stores object ID and location of all directories in, R in the RFS volume. Therefore, the, to get directory information to object ID, you need to refer to object ID table. Uh, next, Container table is a metadata file for RFS new address system. To obtain the physical offset information of a file in RFS, 
it is necessary to convert the Asian value differently from NTFS. The conversion mechanism we used at this time could be found by reverse engineering the translate LCN tuple function of RFS util. Uh, lastly, the parent child table is a metadata file that contains information about the parent child relationship of a directory. The parent child table can be used later to check the purpose of a specific file in the log file. We confirm the existence of the change journal in RFS. The difference from NTFS USN journal is that it uses USN record version 3, not a sparse file. Since the RFS change journal file does not have a sparse function, data is recorded in the form of circular buffer. And unlike USN journal use USN record version 2, change journal use using record version 3, which seems to be to use a 16 bytes file reference number. So FSUT, you can create a change journal on a RFS volume and query its contents. OK, uh, now is log file, our main research contents. Uh, log files also exist in RFS, however, there are several different parts from NTFS. NTFS log files record redo and undo operation. However, uh, RFS only records redo operation and has a new record structure. And as the file system is different, the opcodes records in the log file are different. The mechanism of RFS log file is the record transaction that occurred in RFS. When an event occurs in RFS, the related phase is updated. When a phase is updated, it means that the row in the phase is changed. At this time, the log file records information on the row to be changed. For example, suppose a user create a file, then the row for the create file will be inserted into the phase of the directory. Usually, the create file name or timestamp is entered in the insert row. In this situation, the insert row is recorded in the log file. In other words, the name and timestamp of create file are recorded in the log file. Thanks to this mechanism of log file, we will be able to track users' best behavior in log file. Then let's look at the internal structure of the RFS log file. The structure of the RFS log file that I analyze is as shown in the figures here. I first analyzed the log file information table among the metadata files that uh, object ID table has. Log file information table contains location of log file. It is exactly the location of the log file control area. From the log file control area, you can find the log file data area where the log file data is located. Uh, okay, log file entry structure. Here we can check the analog signature and LSIM. Analog mentioned earlier in motivation was the signature value of log file entry. What we should be interested in log file entry is log record, not header. This is the internal structure of log records. Log records consist of a series of read records. Read records store opcode and transaction data that can 
identify which file system operation is. Let's see this through a new example. The XX value can be seen when viewing a read record with a hex editor. The opcode field value is x1, which indicates that this read record is data for an operation called insert row. Let's look at which row was added where. If you look at transaction data, you can see object ID for root directory at first here. This means that the data that follow is applied to the root directory. You can see that the key value below is the key value of the row to be added to the root directory. In other words, we can infer that an operation related to test.txt file. Especially, an operation related to file creation occurred in the root directory. By interpreting each read record like this, we will be able to trace the action that occurred in the RFS volume. We found out the meaning of a code in read record by analyzing the perform read function. Uh, let's see through IDA Pro. Uh, okay, perform read. Yeah. Uh, in this function, you can see that the function code is different depending on the uh, value of uh, variable 13. From the name of the function being called, the 30, uh, variable 13 means the opcode. And we can see what operation the opcode refers to. The opcode and operation of read record are summarized in this table. We want to track fast file operation that a user did on RFS volume. So we conducted an experiment to identify which file operation was performed by analyzing the opcode pattern appearing in several read records. Through the experiment, we were able to identify what behavior the operation patterns appearing in row record means. Row record does not record the full path of the target file. Therefore, to obtain the entire path, you need to refer to the object ID table and parent child table. For example, if row record knows that object ID is x704, you need to know you need to know what directory hex704 is. Since the object ID is hex704, you can find out the name of the directory by finding the row with the key value of hex704 in the object ID table. Suppose the directory was named test directory. Since object ID hex zero hex hex seven o four is not the object ID value of the root directory, the parent parent directory exists. Let the object ID of the parent directory of test directory be hex six hundred. In the object ID table, it can be seen that x600 is the root directory. After all, we can identify the purpose of the file we found but we find in the row records through this process. We had to decide which time value is in the row record would be the time the event occurred. 
fortunately, we are able to check the read record where the time step of the file was recorded and the um, transaction time could be specified through that timestamp. We developed a tool that analyzed RFS change journal and low file based on all the research results. The tool was developed in Python and given a RFS image. It is a simple tool that parse and analyze the change journal and log file. So uh, let's show you how our, how our tool analyzes RFS journal files. Uh, first, to create a RFS image, a virtual disk was created and format with RFS. Okay, uh, then use FSUT to enable change journal on this volume. Uh, FS Okay, and I will create a text file here. Hello. Uh, the file name will be df.ws. Save. Now uh, let's try imaging the iris volume with FTK imager. Uh, let's close the library. Uh, okay, let's wait a minute. Okay, uh, open the RFS image with Arin. Oh. Okay, and click the RFS share button, share button to parse the entire file system. Okay, and you can check the change journal and log file. You can see the result for the log file and change journal like this and find the uh, DFRW's text you just created. Okay, here, if I create. It's to, it, it is a tool developed uh, to analyze the log file and was developed to see how the entire operation occurred. Currently, this tool is developed close, uh, developed close to the POC level. So there may be problems that I did not expect. So please understand. Okay, finally, the conclusion to our study is that forensic analysis is required for RFS journaling file. When forensic analysis of RFS is needed in the future, the change journal and the log file introduced today will serve as serve as important artifacts. 
Okay, uh, that's it for my presentation. Thank you for, sir. Thank you for listening.